with these kinds of studies, you actually have to study a large number of people, and, it, and for some diseases and conditions, it takes a long time to get enough samples to be scientifically valid. In the case of some diseases where, the, where they are actually um, fatal and where patients die early, the samples could actually be analyzed long after the patient is deceased. Um, in the case of genetic studies that are done, the patient's uh, DNA gets tested and we discover certain things about that patient. And so the issue then becomes this genetic information actually could have tremendous relevance for their children and, other, and their brothers and sisters. We uh, uh, seek to understand how best to tell the family members who could be affected by research findings when the family members themselves were not the research subject but the patient who is now deceased is. And so what we're uh, trying to delve into is a whole new area of bioethics and, and law to try to develop the best guidelines, recommendations for scientists who are doing these studies, which are very, very state-of-the-art now and will actually be occurring more often as a result of the technologies and the way that they've evolved. We plan to develop these recommendations within the next three to four years, actually. Uh, we are going to do the preference analyses. We're going to do surveys. We're going to interview people who are potentially going to be affected by the information that we have. And then we're going to have these um, in-depth discussions among the ethics and legal community and get opinions, gather them together, and develop a set of, of guidelines or recommendations from them.